Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozorg and in this video I want to talk about Comprehensive Abacus Packet Chapter 16 Concrete Analysis. How to ask your video related questions. Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We will try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. New Abacus users who want to develop their modeling skills faster in their projects can request user-oriented online and offline services. Subsequently, we offer step-by-step -step guidance, tutoring, and consultancy regarding their problems. The online service includes online sessions and the offline service includes creating special tutorials. In addition, a combination of the two can be requested. This is the table of content for chapter 16. Okay, in this session, uh, I want to explain chapter 16. Chapter 16 is about uh, concrete analysis. And uh, in the structure engineering, um, we have uh, two main materials. One of them is steel and the other one is concrete. Also, we have FRPs and some other uh, materials uh, which are used in uh, structure uh, engineering, but uh, the most important two ones are concrete and steel. In the previous sessions, I have talked about uh, steel and how to define its uh, plastic behavior and how to define its damage behavior. Also, uh, in this session, uh, I'm going to talk about concrete and how to, to define its plastic behavior and how to define its damage behavior with and without element deletion. Okay, uh, I start with uh, theories. Um, models for describing the mechanical behavior of concrete. Uh, we have different uh, mechanical models uh, for compression and tension. As you know, uh, concrete uh, has different behaviors in compression and tension. So we have different models to describe each of these uh, loading regimes. Uh, for under compression, one of the most uh, famous ones is Popovic's model and for tension modeling, one of the most uh, famous ones is the Shima's model. And in this session, I use these two models and I will talk about them completely and explain them completely to you. Um, this is the equation for the Popovic's model and uh, Epsilon ci and f prime c are two constants and uh, they are uh, they are obtained from uh, experiments okay um, you define a compression test specimen and from your concrete and then uh, do the compression test on it and get the uh, nominal stress versus nominal strain curve um, F prime C is the maximum value of compressive stress and epsilon C, sorry, epsilon C, I know, epsilon C. Epsilon C is the corresponding strain to F prime C. And uh, epsilon C I is the strain of each point of the curve. Okay. Uh, sigma C I corresponds to epsilon C I. And n is a constant, and this is its equation. In this equation, f prime c uh, must be in megapascal. Also, we have this relationship for k. Uh, if uh, a strain 
is between 0 and epsilon c, k is 1, and if a, a compressive strain is more than epsilon c, then k is calculated from this equation. Also, this equation must be greater than 1. I think if it is not greater than 1, we must use 1 again, I think. Uh, in the all of the projects that uh, I have done, in all of them, uh, k was greater than 1 for this formula. Uh, but uh, so um, according to my engineering sense, I'm telling you that if this equation is not greater than 1, so k must be equal to 1 again. And I mentioned that F prime C uh, is maximum measured compressive stress and epsilon C is the strain corresponding to F prime C. And we have uh, this curve for the stress versus strain um, in the compressive loading of concrete. And here you can see the maximum of the curve we have F prime C and epsilon C. And until a point, uh, as you know, the behavior is elastic. It is a portion of F prime C. And uh, usually F prime C is between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. And most of the time, we assume that alpha is 0 0.3. So until 30% of the F prime C, we are in the elastic region, then we go to the plastic region, and then we go to the damage region. And, uh, um, okay, uh, I want to simulate example one. I create a folder. Example one. Uh, Compression test. Yes, compression test. Um, okay. Working directory. Very good. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, this is our specimen, it's made from concrete and the radius of the cylinder is 75 millimeter, its height is uh, 375 and we apply uh, an 8 displacement loading, uh, also this is the density of concrete, time period of the simulation is 1 second, it is not important because the CDP model is not uh, dependent on the strain rate by default. Also, we use the dynamic explicit step for simplicity. And uh, I mean, uh, because I don't want to face convergence issues, OK? And also, I want to model uh, element removal. I told you that uh, from version uh, 2018 or 2019, um, element deletion is added to the CDP model, uh, but you must activate it from uh, keywords. You must write keywords to add it to the model. Also, we will do it today. And those keywords are only available in Abacus Explicit. I will talk about them completely. I will talk about them completely. And uh, because of this, uh, I don't have any other choice to use dynamic explicit step. This is the limitation of abacus, not me. Uh, this is the mass scale coefficient, 10 to the power of minus 5. And also uh, for field output request, uh, I must activate also damage C and damage T. Uh, they are the damage parameters of concrete in compression and tension. Uh, respectively, uh, I want to have 100 frames and uh, for history output, I want to obtain the reaction force and displacement at the reference point at the top of the cylinder and also element size is 10 millimeter. 
uh, we do uh, the analysis in two cases. In the first one, we don't define element deletion, and in the second one, we define the element deletion, and uh, we will compare them. And also, this is the keyword explanation. I will talk about it later on. Um, okay, this is model one. I create uh, a part named cylinder it is 3d deformable solid i want to use the extrusion technique and approximate size 500 i define the origin uh, i fix it also i define a construction line and i define a circle its radius is 75 very good also, its height is 375, and we have it. I go to the property module, I define concrete. The density is 2400 e to the power of minus 12, because the unit of length is millimeter. Mechanical elasticity elastic. Um, here we have the value of Young's modulus. Also, Poisson's ratio is near 0 0.2. Then I define plasticity, concrete damage plasticity. And uh, here we have the values. Dilation angle is 31, eccentricity 0 0.2, 1.16, 0 0.67. And here you can define viscosity or you cannot. Um, uh, before the class, I defined it, okay, but for the explicit analysis, you can set it to zero. It's not important at all. Then I must define compressive behavior. Uh, for the yield stress, uh, uh, sorry, yield stress in elastic strain, okay? So we must start from here, not here, because uh, in this interval, we are in the elastic region, but we need the plastic region. So I copy it and paste it here. Also, I copy it. and paste it here and the first value must be zero then the tensile behavior yield stress and cracking strain i told you in elastic strain or plastic strain or cracking strain all of them are the same this is a stress also this is strain and I set it to zero. Also, you must define compressive damage. Um, compressive damage. This is damage C. And uh, also the first value must be zero because the in elastic strain always starts from zero. And you will see that when we solve the problem, the maximum value of the damage C will be 0 0.83 in the visualization module. Also for the tension behavior, for tensile behavior, um, damage,
and plastic strain or in elastic strain or cracking strain. Also, if you see the values of damage C and damage T, uh, they are similar. Um, it's by coincidence. Okay, they are similar. It's by coincidence. Um, for example, you can set the maximum value of damage T to 0 0.75 and the maximum value of damage C to 0 0.9. It's not important. They are different. Okay, they are different. What I did, it's by coincidence. It's by coincidence. And okay, it's done. I define a section and I uh, assign it to the material and I define a reference point at the center. Tools set manager. I create a set from RP because I want to apply displacement control loading to the reference point. Also, I define the dynamic explicit step. Energy is set to on. Time period is one, and mass scaling. It is equal to ten to the power of minus five. Okay. So, uh, also I want to have 100 frames and uh, in model 1 we don't define element removal. So, there is no need to activate a status. There is no need. But I want to see the damage pattern. So, I activate damage C and damage T. For concrete, there is no need to activate DMI, CRT, C failure and SDG. Okay, there is no need. And that's it. Also, I define history output. 1000 points. I want to have U3 and RF3. In the interaction. Okay, uh, now I want to solve the second example of this chapter, it is about um, simulating the reinforced concrete. In the first example, we didn't define reinforcement. We didn't define um, armatures. We didn't define rebars. We didn't define stirrups. Uh, and we didn't define any kind of reinforcement. In second example, we define a stirrups and we define armatures and uh, or armatures and uh, uh, and we define reinforcement. Also, we have other kinds of reinforcement. For example, uh, using FRPs or CFRP. Uh, we don't cover them in this uh, chapter. Okay, we don't define uh, cover them uh, in this chapter or even in this course. And but um, we cover the the other kinds of uh, defining reinforcement regarding uh, use of uh, usage of uh, stirrups and armatures or rebars. Okay, um, I create another folder. Example two, um, reinforced. Reinforced concrete. And uh, let me open its slides. Um, also, I open Abacus. Very good. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about um, several strategies to model reinforcement. I mean a steel reinforcement, not FRP or CFRP. Uh, we have two general procedures for modeling reinforcements. Uh, 
for concrete. The first one is using truss elements and the other one is using beam elements. When you want to use truss elements, you must simplify the geometry of the armatures and stirrups and merge them together to create a single part for reinforcements. And for uh, using beam elements, you must model the armatures uh, and stirrups without simplification. They are not merged also. Uh, for example, if I show you here, um, Uh, I want to delete it, but uh -huh, sorry. Very good. Suppose that uh, we have these rebars or armatures. And then we have these stirrups. Mm. And so on. When you want to model them you have two procedures if you model them with truss elements you must not define these curvatures of stirrups you must model them like rectangle and you must define the position of rebars or armatures in a way that they exactly pass these corners exactly or sometimes you have some kind of holders here also they must pass exactly and all uh, from these uh, points okay this is a kind of simplification and then they merge all of them together but notice if you want to use beam elements you must model stirrups in this way okay and then you must model armatures or rebars here they must not contact each other okay they must not but they must here they must they must not coincide but they must coincide and also if you want to model uh, holders for example uh, for example you must model them like this and again rebars or armatures uh, what do you uh, uh, what do you uh, name them rebar or armature rebar, rebar. okay yep. but uh, so i think armature is a general uh, uh, general word yeah Armature is a armature is a general word for all of them, a syrup, uh, rebar, and others. But this is a specifically rebar, and this is a specifically a syrup. Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe. Ah, okay. So uh, in my uh, slides, I have named them uh, armature and these ones rebar. Uh, these ones a syrup, but uh, also they can be rebar. No problem. Okay, this is the difference in their modeling, and I will model them using both. I will model the reinforced concrete using both, and uh, we will check the results. Okay. Um, this is the uh, syrup geometry. The fillet radius is 10 millimeter. Uh, the diameter of the steel beam is 8 millimeter. Also, this length is 318, and this length is 318. This is for beam modeling. Also, for truss modeling, I told you, you must uh, delete these fillets and you must simplify them. So this length will be changed to 338 and this length will be changed to 238. And for rebar or armature, uh, we, uh, we use uh, beams with the diameter of 10 millimeter. Also, their length is 3412 millimeter. Also, these are the steel properties. Um, its density, Young's modulus, and plastic definition. Uh, this is the concrete geometry, the concrete block geometry. Uh, its element size will be 330. Also, beam element size is 50. Uh, for the truss elements, I will tell you later. Also, we have some rigid bodies uh, to apply force and defining boundary conditions with contact. And you can see uh, its geometry. It is a discrete rigid shell. Uh, we have the assembly. Um, these are the rigid parts and this is the concrete block and in the concrete block we have the reinforcements. And uh, here you can see the uh, positioning of syrups in the um, concrete block. And here we have rebars. We, ha we will have 34 stirrups. And uh, we will use uh, both the Abacus Explicit and Abacus Standard solvers to, um, to compare the result. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, here. No. No, correct. We will define seven models. In uh, six models, we will use truss elements, and in one of them, the other one, we use uh, beam elements. In model one, we will use Abacus Standard Solver, and the total displacement of upper rigids is 10 millimeter. In model seven, we use Abacus Standard Solver again, and the total displacement is 10, not 50, this is wrong, it is 10. And also we use beam elements for modeling rebars and stirrups. And in model two, we use Abacus Standard Solver again, and also the, uh, sorry, it is 50. Uh, it is, uh, the total displacement is 50 again. And in model three, we use Abacus Explicit, uh, solver and also the total displacement is 10 millimeter in model 4 we use abacus explicit solver and total displacement is 50 in model 5 in all of them also we use truss element okay we use truss element only in this one we use beam element and in model 5 we use abacus explicit solver again and uh, the total displacement is 10 millimeter and we don't have element deletion here, but in this model and this in this model we have element deletion. Okay, in these two models we have element deletion. 
in these ones we don't have element deletion and in also in model 6 we use uh, um, uh, Abacus explicit solver the total displacement is, is 50 millimeter and we don't use uh, um, uh, element removal again and here you can see the comparison between the results uh, comparison of the results and I will talk about it uh, later on so I start modeling um, Um, okay, um, I want to do the modeling. Um, let me go back to the slides. Mm, first of all, I define the concrete. Um, for model 1, um, STD 10. model 1 std 10 okay i create a part named concrete it is the concrete block 3d deformable solid extrusion um the approximate size of this section is 1000 I fix it. This is three hundred. This is four hundred. And uh, very good. And this size is three thousand five hundred. And uh, then I want to model the truss. Uh, truss. I want to do the truss modeling and um, using uh, uh, here I want to model a strap. A strap 3D deformable wire. 3D deformable wire. 1000 again. I fix it very good this length is 238 this length is 338 okay it's done then the rebar for example rebar 3d deformable wire Planner. Also, I set this size to 10,000. I fix it. How to purchase packages or individual chapters. Each of the packages and individual chapters includes CAE, JNL, and IMP files, step-by-step -step tutorials with detailed explanations and investigation of the results, slides, and reference papers and standards. Packages, specifications, and payment details are provided in the video description. Also, you can pay the cost of the packages in two, three, or four installments according to your budget or income. In the future, updates will be provided for free for everybody who purchases each chapter or each package. The cost of each chapter or package will increase after each update for new buyers, but those who purchase the package would have endless access to all the upcoming updates. This will make the content up to date for new needs and new problems which must be solved via FE simulation. You can contact us using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to us. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk WhatsApp and we can make special tutorials to your order. We can conduct high-quality simulations for your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. And we offer support in writing the modeling and result discussion part of your thesis. And we have consulting services for MSc PhD positions or job interviews. 
and we can help you to prepare the presentation of your simulation works. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.